right, now I've got two units. I've got the four-piece unit and the octagon. I'm, when you look on the back side, I'm going to match up that point. I'm making these darker just so that you can see them. Um, it doesn't always show up on the cameras very well. So I'm going to mark them so that you know exactly where those points are that I'm talking about. Um, that's your stitching line. All right, and those will, once I press them, they'll, those will disappear. That's that Frixion pin. All right, now I'm matching up those points. That's where I'm going to be stitching from point to point. So I'm going to bring my fabric over right sides together. I got to get this coordinated of where I'm going to start because I'm um, doing it by hand. I want to put my end point at the pivot over to my left. All right, now I'll put the pin in that stopping point right there, just on the other side of the seam allowance. Now I go over to my starting point at that dot and I'm gonna grab my needle and thread. Now, as I put my needle and thread in there, I take just a small stitch and I check on the other side. Now, I wasn't matching up, so I scooched it over between my thumb and forefinger. Sometimes it takes a few times. All right, now I'm matching up that point. Good enough. And I'm going to go with my first stitch. Oops, I always pull it through. I've got a knot at my needle so it doesn't pull off my needle. So I do a first back stitch, my second back stitch, and I do a running, st running stitch. That's my mantra. Back stitch, back stitch, running stitch, back stitch, back stitch. You don't stitch in the seam allowance. Stop at that end point right there. When I stop there, pull my threads through, smooth out those stitches. Notice how you can see it kind of in the black. I'm not real concerned about the stitch length or anything. Just get it in there. <laughs> That's kind of the way I look at it. All right, first stitch. Now I do my back stitch. I want to make sure that's real snug right there because it's going to receive a lot of pressure um, when I'm quilting. All right, now I'm going to pivot my fabric right there and match up that point to the left and grab my straight pin and match up those points. Flip it over to the back, back side so that you can see it. Now pull that part to the right you pull that apart and make sure you're not picking up any of the thread. You can feel it in your left hand if there's any extra seam allowance there. That's why I make that stitch real tight right there. Now, I'm going to push through that seam allowance. As I push through, it doesn't show up on the back side because you kind of do it in the seam allowance. It's just to bring your needle to the other side. All right, now I do that first stitch check the back side. It didn't match up, so I'm going to scooch the fabric down a bit and check it again. Aha! See, that's close enough. All right, my first stitch. That makes my first back stitch and a second back stitch. The tighter I can make that point, the, be the better it's going to look on the other side. Now, remember, it's back stitch, back stitch, running stitch. until I get to that end straight pin. All right, I'm at the end of the straight pin. Smooth out the gathers and do my back stitch, back stitch. Now again, you don't go past that dotted line into the seam allowance because as you go in with the next pieces, you want to be able to um, uh, hold those out there. All right, so now when you turn that over and you start pressing those seams, so no notice how those two hummingbird pieces came together so nicely. When you turn it on the back side, you wanna continue pressing the seam allowances in the same direction. Press it out a bit. that kind of sets those seams in there. Now flip it over and admire your handiwork. 
Now, that's even with black thread. Notice you can't even see that. This is the beauty, I think, of the running stitch. You can't see those fabrics. So this is going into my quilt. Have a great day, folks.